In a very, in a very hostile environment. Clim climate, uh, economic conditions, uh, the land itself, the and also the, the English, of course. Why shouldn't they uh, have kept uh, a certain kind of domination over French Canada, which they did? Hostile? Hostile in a very benevolent way, mm. in a fatherly way. Uh, I wouldn't say that they considered French-speaking Canadians, also they were Catholics, uh, that they would consider them as being an inferior race. Uh, British never do, uh, never say so. But then by keeping the top jobs, keeping the top uh, positions open only to English-speaking citizens, they kept uh, efficiently, actually kept control of the, uh, of the main levers of economy, the main political levers. They, they kept themselves at the steering wheel. Our, call it middle class if you like, but our professional, white collar, uh, and other uh, new promotions of people, are pushing for their, to them, and to me, their rightful place. Without going into quotas, sure. if we are 81 thereabouts percent of Quebec's population with no other homeland anywhere in the world, we're not going back to France, you know, in the next ship, then the promotion has to be here. And it is a colonial setup which has to be broken. And it is being broken. And it has to be broken. Can these elderly men and women celebrating the 75th anniversary of Montreal's Westmount Bowls Club really be Quebec's colonial masters? The truth is that for the first time in generations, the English minority feels seriously threatened. In the 60s, a wave of violence heralded the new nationalism. But the minority see the Parti Québécois as a greater threat than the bombers. They are convinced that the language bill alone will end the English domination of Montreal's business community. George Knox came to Montreal 31 years ago. Typically enough, he does not speak French. Today, he expresses the fear felt by many English-speaking businessmen. Well, my company is an English company from Toronto. And what I, does it do, precisely? We're uh, commercial stationers. Mm -hmm. And uh, that means you're calling on a variety of people. Uh, my calls are limited in the fact that I can't speak French, so therefore I've got a state of the English companies who are less in here now than there were. I get along with fine with French companies that I had been calling on, but now it's strange to go into a new company. To try and open a new company is very difficult unless you do speak French. Uh, our company's over 100 years in business in Canada. Our products are well known down here. We sell a fair amount of it, but I can't broaden my base, as it were, as I would do if I come in here, or as I did come in here in 46, I could go almost any place and be accepted, and the English language was acceptable then. Today, some people are not accepting you as English. And tomorrow, we're speaking tomorrow, I say again, it'd be worse. It seems that way. That's what it's aiming at now. Whether that continues, could be a change of government, make that change over again. Let's hope so. Westmount is the posh end of Montreal. But the folks who have lived comfortably on the hill are nervous of their future in the province. Many are getting out, heading west. It's boom time for removal firms who report business 40% up on last year. And for those who make the new pilgrimage, there is an appropriately named firm to transport their possessions. Many leave because the language bill will force their children into French schools. Only where at least one parent has been educated at an English school in Quebec province may a child have an English education. Douglas and Rosemary Devaney have two young children and are typical of the many among the minority who ponder their future in the province. I asked what it was that gave cause to their anxiety. The whole language issue, uh, living in a province where I don't speak French, 80% of the population are French. It's got a government now that's saying they're going to separate it from Canada. And where does that leave me? Like, uh, with the house, with the family? We just don't know where to, what's going to happen next. The Bill 1 puts a fair number of restrictions, or has the potential of putting the restrictions on the English community, where we just, uh, we won't be able to do some of the things that we want to do. One of the things is in education with the boys. Um, we're lucky. The boys could go to English school, because Rosemary was educated here in Quebec. But they couldn't go to French school and learn to speak French and then transfer to English school. That's not allowed. And yet, in order for them to stay in the province, I think they should be bilingual. But 
to send them to French school and have them unilingual French and then stuck in the province and not able to go anywhere in North America, that's not fair to them. So at that point, the thing that we seriously looked at is leaving. Do you fear, Doug, that however good the French that your sons learned, they would in fact end up as second-class citizens within the province to those who naturally speak the language? Yeah, we've had friends that have gone out, uh, a friend of ours has gone out for job applications, talked to counselors, job counselors, and they basically said that no matter how bilingual you become, you're English and I can't place you. Simple as that. I have a feeling you say most of what you're saying uh, more in sorrow than in anger, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I, we've got an advantage in Quebec uh, that the rest of North America doesn't have. We've got a what we consider a more European type of culture. Uh, where you've got restaurants here that you don't have in the rest of North America, the whole milieu. We've got two cultures that we could enjoy. The English are beginning to wake up and say, hey, the only way I can enjoy that culture is if I'm bilingual. Uh, and it's good. But you're not prepared to do that if you're going to be, if you're frightened that you're going to get insulted or get into an embarrassing situation. Or if the whole province separates, then it's gone. Or lose your job. That's right, or lose your job. And that's a potential as well. If it separates, uh, you would certainly go. Oh, yes. Leave Quebec as soon as possible. Rosemary, would you be very sad to leave? I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I've got a bit of a spirit of adventure, and I could be happy going anywhere um, at any given time. I think it's tragic if we have to leave uh, not wanting to. Well, the one thing we can say is that as long as, in good faith, the English-speaking minority in Quebec allows for the full promotion of French rights. And that means uh, taking over a dominant position in our homeland. There's no intention whatsoever, in Bill 1 or elsewhere, of, you know, any kind of eradication or pushing them outside like new loyalists, uh, you know, for 200 years later. But it's up to them to make up their minds also that they will accept the evolution in Quebec. In other words, that they will be a minority, just like our people outside in Canada, throughout the rest of Canada, are just minorities, more or less respected, and to be frank, less respected than the English have ever been in Quebec. I suppose the greatest fear is in the fear, uh, field of education, isn't it? The in the insistence that unless a parent has been educated in, in English in Quebec, their children must be educated in French quite well, simply believe that means second-rate education, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> well, there is a possibility of some sort of reciprocity. Supposing other provinces decide that they can do as well as Quebec for their own French minorities, as well as we do for our English minorities, maybe there is an opening there for arrangements. But it would have to be reciprocal. 500 employees were sacked when this steel plant shut down last June. The derelict buildings and idle rolling mills are typical of Quebec's precarious economy. Unemployment throughout the province is running at over 10%. In some country areas, it accounts for one in four of the workforce. Quebec reflects Canada's economic malaise, but the language bill and the moves to separatism add to business doubts. An exodus of English-dominated firms to Toronto is predicted when the bill becomes law. The government argues that the language issue must be settled to create the climate to tackle the economy. It is not an argument that appeals much to Pierre Desmarais, liberal politician and president of the Quebec Council of Businessmen. No way. Uh, the particular Quebec ministers do think so, but they haven't been in the field. They haven't been in the real life. They're mostly academics. They come from government, and they don't know our capital is volatile. And uh, from my point of view, as head of Le Conseil du Patronat du Québec, we've seen the businesses go away, we've seen investors not investing in Quebec, and we've seen the investor uh, waiting uh, to see what the climate will be. But when this is taking place, the economic climate is getting worse. Robert Dean is leader of the Quebec Car Workers Union. Although of English stock, he believes the language bill must be given priority. Quebec is French. Those who function in Quebec uh, have to be prepared to operate their plants, their offices, in the French language. And uh, 
I think that once that question is clear, then many industries who have been hesitating will go ahead with their plans because the company that makes soup or automobiles and who sells them in Quebec by millions and millions of dollars,